There's something oddly satisfying about turning kitchen scraps into garden gold. Gardeners have been doing it for generations, banana peels, coffee grounds, eggshells. So when rice water started trending online as a natural fertilizer, it really piqued my curiosity. Some called it the miracle tonic for lush leaves and explosive growth. Others warned of fermentation and fungus. So I decided to do what any skeptical gardener would test it. For seven days straight, I watered my plants using only rice water. No compost tea, no worm castings, no seaweed solution, just the starchy runoff left behind from rinsing rice. What I discovered wasn't a magic potion, but something far more interesting. Rice water, when used properly, is a quietly powerful tool that can support healthier seedlings, stronger roots, and more resilient soil. But it comes with caveats, and if you get them wrong, it can do more harm than good. Let's unpack the science and share the real-world results. So, rice water is the cloudy liquid produced after rinsing uncooked rice. It actually contains trace amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These are the core macronutrients needed for plant growth. But what really makes rice water different from, say, diluted fertilizer, is its starch content and those subtle microbiological benefits. The starches in rice water feed soil microbes, which then help make nutrients more available to your plants. In a seed starting context, this is especially intriguing. Young seedlings benefit from a gentle, consistent nutrient source that doesn't overwhelm their fragile roots. Traditional fertilizers, on the other hand, can burn those tender shoots or even disrupt early microbial life. Rice water being mild and organic offers a safer, more gradual support system. Plus, it costs nothing and repurposes something most households throw away. For this test, I used plain white rice and collected the rinse water each day. I rinsed the rice once, stirred it thoroughly, and collected the cloudy liquid in a jar. No boiling, no soaking overnight, no additives. I made sure to use the water within 24 hours to prevent fermentation. So then I split my plants into two groups. Group A received only dechlorinated water. Group B got rice water every other day alternating with plain water just to avoid any buildup. I focused mainly on seedlings, herbs in pots, and a few leafy greens growing in raised beds. The setup was simple, but honestly, the results were surprisingly nuanced. So, during the first couple of days, there really weren't any dramatic transformations, but you know, I did notice something small, yet meaningful, moisture was holding better in the seed starting trays that received rice water. The starchy content seemed to improve water retention just a bit, keeping the surface from drying out as quickly. This actually created a more stable microclimate for the germinating seeds, the cilantro and basil seedlings in particular started showing these darker green hues in their cotyledons. While this could be partly coincidental, the contrast with the control group was clear enough to make me raise an eyebrow. At this early stage the plants weren't really growing any faster, but, honestly, they just seemed more stable and vigorous. So, midway through the week, the differences became, you know, a lot more noticeable, especially in container herbs and leafy greens. The topsoil around the rice-watered plants was developing this richer, slightly darker texture. Honestly, I attribute this to boosted microbial activity. The starches in the rice water are actually a food source for beneficial microbes like mycorrhizal fungi and nitrogen-fixing bacteria. These microbes help break down organic matter and make nutrients more accessible to roots. The plants were definitely responding. Leaf turgor improved and the lettuce looked fuller, perkier, and well, just a bit glossier. Even the spinach, which is, you know, kind of notorious for being finicky in containers, looked a whole lot less stressed. There was no curling, no yellowing, just even steady growth all around. By the end of the week, the benefits of rice water were, well, totally tangible, 
especially on plants growing in healthy, well-draining soil. Basil, for example, showed fuller leaf sets and honestly, much faster new growth. The seedlings had stronger stems, less legginess, and yeah, noticeably greener leaves. The roots when I checked them in the soil cubes were wider and more developed compared to the control group. But it wasn't all perfect. I made a rookie mistake with one of the watering sessions. I reused a jar of rice water that had been sitting out for over 48 hours. It had started to ferment slightly, which I didn't notice until the following day, when a faint sour smell and some white fuzz appeared on the soil surface of a few trays. That's when it hit me. Rice water, while beneficial, is not foolproof. If you let it sit, it will go bad, and quickly. That means anaerobic bacteria may begin to dominate, throwing off your soil balance and encouraging mold, rot, or fungus gnats. So if you're going to use it, make it fresh, use it promptly, and never apply it to soggy soil. In a word, yes, but it's not magic. So, rice water works best as a supplement, not a substitute. It enhances microbial life and it gives seedlings a gentle nutrient boost. Plus, it improves hydration. But, you know, it won't fix poor soil or replace a balanced fertilizing schedule. Think of it as a companion to compost, not a competitor. For seeds starting in particular, it's a gentle way to introduce nutrients without risking chemical burn. For container herbs, it's a safe hydration source that also feeds the soil community. And, for established plants, it's a once-a-week treat that keeps roots and microbes happy, if used fresh. Avoid overuse, avoid fermentation, alternate with plain water, and most of all, observe. You know, every plant, container, and climate behaves a little differently, so it's important to pay attention to the signals your plants are giving you. Rice water is honestly one of those rare gardening hacks that's simple, free, and genuinely useful. It won't transform your garden overnight, but it will make your soil more biologically alive, your seedlings more resilient, and, well, your watering routine just a little more productive. As gardeners, we're constantly balancing what we put into the soil with what we hope to get out. Rice water offers a subtle, sustainable way to give back to your garden with something you're already using in your kitchen. That's the kind of lazy genius solution Hydro Haven loves to share. If you found this guide helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to Hydro Haven for more smart, soil-loving gardening experiments and hacks. And if you know a gardener who loves results but hates waste, share this video with them. Because sometimes the best garden tools are hiding in your kitchen sink.